Hello, welcome to His Story. I am your host, Cade Lanzone. We have a very special guest tonight. He's come out of his long retirement to educate and inform us on his archaeological accomplishments, specifically on the island of Crete. His work has helped to illuminate the Bronze Age through reconstruction and interpretation. Welcome to the show, Sir Arthur Evans. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, for listeners who don't know who you are, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? All right. My name is Sir Arthur Evans. I was born July 8th in 1851 in Hertfordshire, England. I grew up a, a very wealthy, intelligent boy, attending Harrow Public School and eventually attending and graduating from Oxford University. Wow. Uh, that's a long leave of absence. I hope you've been enjoying it. Oh, it's, I've been resting, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, you, you, you've said you've had a privileged childhood. Could you speak more on that and how it's affected you? Well, I was the oldest of three children. I had a younger brother named Louis and a younger sister named Joan. We all grew up rather wealthy thanks to my father, who was an author as long as an archaeologist and a partner in a paper manufacturing business. Your father was also an archaeologist? Yeah, he excavated in Austria, but he was more focused around the Iron Age. <laughs> so you could say he was your inspiration? Absolutely. He is the reason for my passion towards antiquity and a personal hero of mine. Although, uh... You're most known for archaeology. It all began with your first big job as director of the Ashmolean Museum for 24 years, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, you even donated some of your father's collection to this museum. I can only imagine this job had a big impact on you and became your passion. Would I be right to say that? To some degree, you could say that. The Ashmolean Museum only furthered the passion my father planted, so it was only right for them to be able to present his work. Mm -hmm. However, my passion still lies with discovery. I wanted to claim my own piece of antiquity. Mm. This is when you began to excavate Crete yourself, correct? Yes. I became obsessed with ancient coins and inscribed stones from Crete. I tracked them down and found Knossos, an ancient Greek palace. That's that's fantastic. Uh, the passion and obsession, I would say they certainly paid off. I would say so. I was actually able to purchase the entire site in order to excavate with my earlier career success as an author. Mm-hmm. I would go on to excavate the Knossos during my holidays. I deduced that it was a, a palace of some kind due to its size. It also reminded me of the, kick of the myth of King Minos due to the bull, motifs in the area, and thus I named the civilization Minoan after King Minos. Uh, you really believe this was the home of King Minos? I do, and uh, let me tell you what. There was a bull leaping fresco in the main courtyard and bull imagery all around the palace. This alludes to the myths surrounding King Minos and the Minotaur. Uh, I, I see. Uh, did you find anything else there while you were excavating? Yes, I did. I found around 3,000 clay tablets written, written in both linear A and B text. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to decipher the text, but everything takes time. Mm. Uh, what is their significance? Well, linear A and B are believed to be the earliest forms of Greek writing, but we are still unsure. I have recently heard that linear, linear B was deciphered, but linear A is still a mystery. Uh, where are all these tablets now, along with everything else from your excavation? <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually own everything from the excavation. Dang. I bought the land and all the rights to everything from the Ottomans. These pieces helped create my collection in the Ash Museum, Ashmolean Museum as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the excavation of the tablets was huge, no doubt. Uh, could you touch on the excavation of Knossos as a whole? Uh, namely, the 1300 rooms, theater, pithoi, aqueducts, ventilation, etc. Yeah, we excavated pretty quickly and pushed through some newer stuff until we looked, like found what we were looking for. And those were ruins and objects that date around 1200 BCE. Once we found these objects, we tried to be very careful and took our time uncovering and recording where these objects were found. From this information we gathered, I set to restoring this palace. Mm -hmm. I first attempted to restore it with materials around the island, and it became unstable within 10 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next, we tried plaster and wood, and this lasted a little bit longer, but it became structurally unsound within 15. Mm -hmm. Finally, we abandoned all pretense and just used concrete and iron and I believe this version should last much longer. <laughs> uh, well, no doubt it would last longer. Uh, but some would say that this is wrong. And that is not a restoration because there's no way you could possibly know what the original looked like. Well, the problem 
is that no one really knows what looks like exactly. However, my team and I restore Knossos to the best of our knowledge. We tried to use examples and information from what we found there and similar data and information from other places around ancient Greece and that were dated around the same time period. As more of a template, try to bring what mm -hmm. we found and uncovered back to life in the way it once was. Uh, well, no doubt you guys have made something beautiful, but that method can almost corrupt our interpretation of their civilization, correct? Um, although the restoration brought to life um, a possible recreation of the time, there's no way to know if it's the correct interpretation. This has also been said to be an issue with your restoration of the art and naming of certain rooms, specifically the throne room and the infamous Ladies in Blue. Well, as I said before, we used information and data from not only Knossos, but other places around Greece that were dated around the same time period. I believe this is the most accurate representation of what Knossos looked like given the data we have. See, the truth is, we only know what we find and everything else is really just speculation and interpretation. But for the information we have, we've done the best job we could. All right, you, you say you use things from around the site, but what specific information and data did you use? Well, the information I used, I had acquired from years of research and work around the Ashmolean Museum. I actually have written quite a few books on these discoveries, opinions, and speculations on ancient ruins and scripts and such. That, that's right. For uh, listeners more interested on the topic, uh, they can be found in the Palace of Minos, a comparative account of the successive stages of the early Cretan civilization, as illustrated by the discoveries at Knossos, as well as Cretan pictographs and pre-Phoenician script. Those are sold wherever books are sold. Uh, congratulations <laughs> on all your discoveries. You have done it. You've carved out a piece of antiquity for yourself and the world. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Any last remarks about Canossos for our visitors, listeners? Well, it's open for business, so if you want to see what ancient Greece would have looked like, come on down the creek. <laughs> yes, sir. All righty, that's all for us today at His Story. Have a good day.